I went to to film school, so I'm like mm-hmm. a hyper analyst when it comes to film. And I'd say Colin and I are a hyper analyst when it comes to Emma Chamberlain videos. Oh uh, my god, that's and, the yeah. greatest compliment. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's an era of your videos mm-hmm. of the like when you started doing the like single word titles and the oh, yeah. like, alterations was the first yeah. one. Yes, alterations. Yes, there's yeah. a major shift. Bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Thumbnails have, went from being like graphic designed to yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. Intros went from you being like, hi, good morning, yeah. to maybe no intro yeah. until. Yep. Or 30 seconds of no talking. Two yeah. minutes in sometimes. I have a, like a film school analysis of that that I'm curious if, is is your perspective. Tell me everything. So that happened at a time as you're like becoming an adult, right? Yes. And the voyeuristic nature of those videos, right? The camera is distant, but observing you is representative of the ever present third person that you created in your life, which is the audience that is hyper analyzing your every move and always present, even if at a distance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, great. But you know, what's interesting about (laughs) that? Satisfying to hear that because I was like, what if she goes, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. No, but it, it it's was- It's not that deep. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a cool shot, dude. Yeah. Yeah. There was a ledge there and the yeah. camera just fit on top. I just bought tripod. my first real tripod. Yeah. I was yeah. trying it so, out. <laughs> chill out. No, it's interesting that you say that because it's such an accurate read, but it happened in such a subconscious way. It like, almost felt to me like you were like, like you had no choice, but you had let these people into your house and you're like, fine, I'm just going to live my life, but <laughs> yeah. you can watch because yeah. that's what I've signed up for now. Totally. Right. Totally. There were a lot of comments during that time that were like, she's filming like she's the last person on earth. <laughs> I kind of felt like that during that time. But yeah. I guess that was like COVID, was COVID still. Yeah, that was a lot true. of time at home. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. But it was definitely like a really, I mean, I think it's pretty clear to anyone who's watching. I wasn't a particularly happy girl. Right. Like, but I think I had gotten to a point where I felt like I couldn't really say that anymore. Like, I felt like it, it, vulnerability at one point was about all things. At one point was what people really liked about me. But I had gotten to this point where people didn't want to hear that from me anymore. They were like, you're depressed. You don't get to be depressed anymore. Like, yeah. you, which I understand, by the way, I understand that perspective because if you haven't experienced, you know, like mm, ca- a career success in that way, you would assume that that would solve a lot of problems and that there wouldn't be room for upset anymore. People started to say, that I was like, f- anytime I would talk about, say like a mental health struggle or whatever, it was either, I mean, there was still some support of course, but it became, you're lying for, to like, you're be- basically being fake relatable. Mm. Uh, or you just, you don't, you're not allowed to feel that way anymore because you've reached a level of success and now you're not allowed to feel that anymore. But then during this time that we're referring to now, I was not doing well. Like I was pretty depressed and I couldn't say that anymore. But then at the same time, I I was sick of like doing like a video where I go and try to run a marathon in one day or like I, you know, like a challenge or something that's sort of more concept based, like that was so unfulfilling for me. It it just felt fake and useless to me. I was like, I can't do this anymore. And it's not fun for me. I just, I can't. And I always try to cut things off right when they're not fun anymore, right? So it was not fun anymore. So it was like, it was this really bizarre time for me where I just didn't know what to do. But yet I didn't want to stop. So I was like, you're in my house. Like, and it's not going to be funny because I'm not funny right now. It's not going to be, it might actually be really fucking boring, but that's all I got. I haven't watched them in a long time, but I'm I'm thinking about them now and 
It was an emo vibe. It was, it was an a emo great, vibe. It was a great I mean, vibe. It was a great vibe. Probably from they two. They were fun, though. From two, also times. Like, two emo kids. It was, yeah, yeah from know, two emo kids, emo we were kids. in. From enough, one hot topic kid yeah. to another. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, were, <laughs> we were bought in enough to make a film critique of it and yeah. talk about how much we loved Honored. it. Honored, yeah. Uh, but I think when you make that shift at that time on YouTube and you leave space, silence at times. Yes. And you're not spoon-feeding the audience the concept of I'm running a marathon or I'm sleeping on my balcony for 24 hours. Yeah. You also leave gaps where the audience now has to work mm. and try and interpret yes. what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. Man, when, you have this great quote from your podcast mm -hmm. uh, that I listened to on my way into work one day. It's It was said, um, good creative doesn't beg for your attention. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, like that quote mm -hmm. shook me. Yeah. Because that's almost the antithesis to how people make YouTube videos today. Yeah. And, and it's, and I'm so glad to see that shift happening because I think the sort of quick, fast, hot, trendy content is, I mean, that's like, that's a creative art form in its own. Mm. I mean, trust me, that is, but I'm at a place now where I'm like, I want to provide something that makes people think in a way that's positive. Like I want to help people's brains, you know, to me, slowing things down does that in a way. And I think we're all kind of getting to a point where things being so fast and so dramatic and so like, you know, like whatever has altered this, our attention spans in a lot of ways. You know, it's, a, it's altered the, the way that we consume content. We're, we're having a harder time sitting down and watching something that's a bit slower. I, I think it's not just attention spans, but it's yeah. our appetite for sensationalism. That's very true, that's which, very true. Which is the most troubling to me. I think what makes something interesting now, mm -hmm. the, the, the stakes that are required to make yes. something interesting, the um, there's a, a comedian Andrew Schultz. Mm -hmm. You know him. He mm -hmm. said that right now, what works is a car crash. Yes. Which yes. is like, and, and then you think about it, if you're running a media company and you're trying to get people to watch stuff, like the level of sensationalism you have to get to to capture someone's attention. It's not just speed; it's also subject matter. You're right. And it's actually mm -hmm. more that now. It's than more realizing. subject yeah. matter, and I think that's the most troubling is that we have an appetite for subject matter that's dark, mm -hmm. that's twisted, that's scary, that's mm -hmm. like, and we are swiping through it or scrolling through it at a yeah. rapid pace. We're numb. We're numb yeah. to it. Oh, and because it's like our bar keeps raising for exactly. what, what is interesting or what is capturing our, our attention at the moment. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you stop? You said like, I didn't want to stop. I would imagine that's a, a great time to stop. I know. I know you both know this. YouTube is an addiction. It's an addiction. And I didn't stop because I was fully addicted to YouTube. Like we, we become addicted to YouTube. I think in part because it's our jobs, it becomes our jobs. You know what I mean? Like for us, it's, it's, it's our job. It's clocking in, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's identity. But it, that's a whole yeah. huge part of it, it is. And I, I believed for a long time that if I stopped posting on YouTube, my career was over. My career was over, which was not something that necessarily scared me. I've gone through phases, but I'm not, like that is not the end of the world to me. Like if everything went away, I, I've become comfortable with that idea. If everything went away, I would be totally okay. Like I don't need this. I don't need, it's, I enjoy it. I choose to do it. But if for whatever reason it all went away tomorrow, I'd be okay. And I know that. So that's, but that's what's interesting. It's like I kept going because it wasn't just my job. There was another piece. Like it's, I don't know. It's so weird. Like what I is it? I find it to be a mirror. YouTube is a mirror, mm -hmm. right? Like you're like exploring who you are. Mm -hmm. And you do that through, as a creative, you do that through what comes out of you, right? Mm -hmm. 
And whatever comes out of you, you look at it and you watch it back and you're like, oh yeah, that's me. Yeah. Then you take another step and you put it out to millions of people and they reflect back to you. And you're like, yeah, yeah so that is me. Mm -hmm. And you're constantly looking at like, who am I? And you need to look in the mirror. And as a creative, that's putting stuff out. Yeah. And as a YouTuber, that's publishing. That's that's pressing publish. So I, I think like I've explored this relationship too because I feel very, feel very uncomfortable when we're not publishing. It's an uncomfortable yeah. feeling, right? It's just like in your body. And we've been posting YouTube videos for 12 years together. Yeah. And I don't remember a week where I didn't think about it. Yeah. And so to turn that off is like, how do you, I feel like it's like a crutch and it's comforting to care about something so intensely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even if it's unhealthy at times. Yeah. When it comes to identity, I think to myself, I see myself as someone who yeah. cares really intensely yeah. about what they do, what they make, and what they're putting out. Mm -hmm. So even if I'm uncomfortable and I don't like what it started to build, yeah. I'm like, oh, I gotta keep doing that because that's that's what I do. It's like a part of who I am. It is. I mean, even now, I, I still feel that discomfort inside from not posting. Like, Every week that goes by, I, f I feel it. But I turned it off and stopped because I had to. I had to. And when I say I had to, I, I unfortunately have no other explanation other than my intuition. And my entire career thus far, I'm in the driver's seat and my intuition is taking me everywhere something in my body though it's you know though there's a part of my body that's feeling the discomfort from being out of that hamster wheel there's a much stronger voice saying you cannot do this right now you just can't you can't it's it's not right it's just not right and a lot of times my intuition says things that go against what anyone else would tell me to do. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's how I've arrived. I know to trust that instinct. And I, I know why the instinct is telling me that. Like I'm not completely aloof. I, I know why. You have to know when something is done when you've done everything that can be done and any more would start to be too much. Yeah. Like I, I can't, there's no, we, that's we only. We don't get seasons. Yeah. Right. Like we aren't on TV shows that have end dates. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. We also run our own network mm -hmm. that is just there sitting there and mm -hmm. we're the programming executive. So like we don't have that of like, Oh, okay. The Emma Chamberlain vlog season is done now. Then yeah. we don't have that infrastructure to decide. Or even being like, and YouTube didn't pick it back up. Yeah. So right. like, yeah. what am I gonna do? There's actually something right. beautiful about that. <laughs> yeah. Of like, oh, they didn't say yes. You know, like. I don't have a choice. Yeah, I don't yeah. have a choice. But when you have a choice, it actually haunts you. Haunts. That you're actively making a choice to not. Yeah. And that is that is a strange feeling that we deal with as independent creatives. Yep. Um,